Okay. So we are going to talk about organizing data today. We've got a couple of definitions. Uh, stem and leaf plot, which you should have remembered. You've seen stem and leaf plots before. That's a plot where each data value is split using the place values of its digits. And we'll see visual examples. And then we have a back-to-back -back stem and leaf plot, which is a more specific stem and leaf plot, where you can actually use it to compare two different data sets. And you can do that because you have leaves on each side of the stem. And we'll see an example of that, I believe, as well. So um, this is kind of silly, but when you graduate and start looking for a job, you may have to keep track of a lot of information. And this is true. Sometimes you need to keep track of data. I remember when I graduated from college and I was applying for teaching jobs, I was applying for a lot of jobs. You know, I mean, we live in Chicago land. This is a very populated area. There was a lot of schools. And I literally had a spreadsheet where I kept track of, you know, the, the job I applied for, when I applied, all those different things to try and keep myself organized. So one way is a table, which is like, like I did with a spreadsheet. So, so we could use the given data to make a table. So when you read this little paragraph here, it's kind of like overwhelming. You know, Jack, Jack times his bus rides to and from school. On Monday, it took seven minutes to get to school and nine minutes to get home. On Tuesday, it took five minutes and nine minutes, respectively. And on Wednesday, it took eight minutes and seven minutes. We didn't read there like, eh, I don't know, a lot of numbers, a lot of times. But if we put it in a chart, it's much easier to read the data. It's more organized. You see here in a chart now, we list out Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. We have a, we have a column for two school and coming home. And it's, it's much easier to look at. It, it, you, can, you can compare the data easier. You can visualize the data easier. So as opposed to a paragraph, this table, much easier to read. So this is kind of a similar, it's kind of the same style. We're going to make it, I mean, I'm not going to have you make this table. We're just going to kind of watch along here. Jill timed herself jogging to the park and back home. On Monday, she ran to the park in 12 minutes and back home in 14 minutes. On Tuesday, it took her 13 and 15 minutes, respectively. And on Wednesday, it took her 11 and 13 minutes. So again, this is like the same style uh, question as before. If we put it in a chart where we have three columns, the day, the time to the park, and the time home, it's much easier to visualize. All right, so that's an example of organizing data. Now let's talk about a stem and leaf plot. So a stem and leaf plot is another way to display data. The values are grouped so that all but the last digit in the same is the same in each category. So you can see here is a very small version. You know, it says two, and then it's got the line and five. That would mean 25. So the two would be the stem. The five would be the leaf. So it says list the data values of the stem and leaf plot. So we got stem and leaf plot here. We were asked to list all the data. So the numbers to the left of the line, those would be tens digits, and the numbers to the right would be ones digits. So our data would be, so there's a, there's a key for the um, seven leaf plot. And our data would be 12, and then 15, and then we move down to the four. So we'd have 40, 41, 41. There's two 41s there. Then it would be 52, 57, and 59. So if you had to list out the data of a stem and leaf plot, that's how you would do it. So this is the same question, basically, a new stem and leaf plot. You're asked to list the data. And again, you know, so it would be 23, 26. That would be for the, for the two. Then I move down to the three, 37, 38, 39, move down to the four, 42, 45, and 46. So what if we were going to make a stem and leaf plot? So we're given um, a table here the top speeds of animals. So you can see a cheetah is the fastest. It goes 64 miles an hour. Then a wildebeest, which goes 61 miles per hour and so on. We could use these numbers to make a stem and leaf plot. So the tens digits would be our stems. And we look, we've got numbers in the 60s, the 50s, and the 40s. So that means four, five, and six are gonna be my stems. And then um, I'm gonna list them out. And you list them in order from least to greatest. So if we look at my 40s, the gray fox, 42, would be first, then 43, then 45. The lion is our only numbers in the 50s, and it was 50 exactly, 50 miles per hour. So you need to put a zero. Don't, like, put nothing. 50, to represent 50, it would be five as the stem, zero as the leaf. And then we got 61 and 64 for the cheetah and wildebeest.
So here's another example of uh, making a stem and leaf plot. The percentage of people under 18 years old as of the year 2000. So you see a bunch of different um, categories there. I always ask this, I don't have you guys in front of me to ask, but Florida is the lowest. Only 23% of their population is under 18. Why do you think that is? Think about it. Well, it's probably because Florida is a very popular retirement area. So there's a lot of people that are senior citizens that are of an older age, which is why the percentage would be less. And I always ask people, why do you think Alaska is the most? Why is it the highest percentage are uh, children under age, under age 18 in Alaska? Well, it's probably because a lot of people turn 18, they become adults, they go off to college, whatever it might be, and then they leave Alaska and they don't come back. So in turn, there's more kids because once people become adults, sometimes they leave. All right, but let's make this in a, into a stem and leaf plot. So all we have is 20s and 30s. So our stems are just going to be two and three. And you can see we only had one and 30 that was Alaska. So we listed out our stem and leaf plot. Make a key when you make a stem and leaf plot. It's nice to make a key. So in this case, because these represent percentages, it's nice to say two line three would be 23%. So a back-to-back -back stem and leaf plot is used to compare two sets of data. The stems are in the center, and the left leaves are red in reverse. So um, this is I'm um, talking about U.S. representatives for selected seats. Actually, <laughs> this is pretty relevant because this is um, also like the number of um, – this helps to determine electoral votes. These are old numbers. And it shows in 1950 versus 2000. Like, look at Illinois. Illinois is on this chart. In 1950, Illinois had 25 U.S. representatives. But in 2000, it only had 19 because the population had decreased in Illinois over that 50-year span. All right, so we we're going to make a back-to-back -back stem and leaf plot. You'd have your stem in the middle. So we can see this ranges from 1, 2, 3. There's actually up into the 40s. New York had 43. Um, representatives in 1950. And now what we can do is on one side we can put 1950, on the other side we can put 2000. And this is a nice visual representation. We can see that in 1950 the highest was 43, we had another one that was 31, Pennsylvania, and you can see that they've all dropped. And that's because the population of this country spread out. You know, it used to be located in closer to major cities and it has spread out across the country more as the um, you know, as time has moved on. So that's a back-to-back -back stem and leaf plot. So we're asked to make one here. Um, this is, you know, asking people if they voted. This is, you know, just made up statistics. Don't, this is not, <laughs> it's just made up statistics. So um, you can see the number of millions that voted and the number of millions that did not vote. And then we could make a back-to-back -back stem and leaf plot. And, you know, that's the comparison there. I'm not, we're not going to spend too much time on this. We're going to keep going here. And that is it. So that is it for this lesson on organizing data.